Hey, Kenneth Russell here. I'm doing a demo of how to bias your amplifier, specifically a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. And uh, so I want to go over kind of the overview of what biasing is, what that even means, and then get down into the nitty gritty and show you how to do it, at least on this amplifier. Uh, what is biasing? Biasing is basically setting the voltage of your two power amps, okay? Your power amps are really what's you know, giving you the meat of your amplifier. That's what's really amplifying your sound. And uh, the voltage has to be set on these because you know the great thing about a tube amp is it will start to break up, kind of go into distortion. But the voltage, how much you're sending to it is when that's going to break up. And so if you're too hot, you're not gonna have any clean room and you're just gonna kind of go straight into distortion. And if you're too cold, you're not gonna have any distortion. You're gonna sound really flat and almost kind of like real muddy. And so it's important to kind of be in the sweet spot of your the voltage of your power amps in order to get the best tone out of your tube amplifier. So that's basically what biasing is. Uh, there's a question, you know, a lot of times if you go on uh, forums and different boards, people will post, well, is it necessary to bias your power amps? And the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, the answer to that is no, you do not have to do them for your tube amp to function. You know, you can plug, you know, you could just get a new pair of tube amps or uh, power tubes, stick them in your amp and turn your amplifier on and it's going to work. Now, is it gonna sound the best? That's really where your question is. So my answer is yes, I think you do need to bias your power tubes because if you don't, you're really not getting the most out of your amplifier. And as we all know, tube amps are not cheap. You know, that's why they're tube amps. And you know, if you wanted a solid state amp that you didn't have to do anything like that, go buy a solid state amp. But if you wanna get the most out of your tube amp, this is what you need to do. You need to bias your tubes. Now, not every, not every uh, tube amp you can self-bias. Uh, this is the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. It happens to have a potentiometer in there. You can self-bias, and which is great. It's one thing I really like about it. I believe that its predecessor, uh, the Fender Deluxe, did not have, um, it did not have the ability. It was just a, a uh, um, you'd have to swap out some stuff inside there to do it. And really, for most people, it would take it to a tech or have a tech install a potentiometer in your uh, in your amp so that you could self-bias. Anyway, um, so in my opinion, you do need to you do need to bias your, your tube amps, especially every time that you put them in there, uh, put, a, put a new set in there. Um, in order, what do you need to do it? You need a millivolt reader that will do DC voltage. Which tubes do you need to bias? These guys right here in any in any amplifier, uh, most in an all tube amp, you're going to have usually a couple preamp tubes, and then you're gonna have these power tubes. Your power tubes are what you need to bias. The preamp tubes are self-biasing. They're not gonna affect your power tubes at all. You can swap out your preamp tubes and it's not gonna affect your power tube biasing even. So you don't have to worry about these guys, but you do have to worry about this guy right here, these, these power tubes. A couple safety things really first. There's a lot of, of voltage running through here. All these capacitors, these you know big kind of circular battery looking things, uh, if you were to touch one of those, it'd really shock you. Even if your amp is off, in order to bias, your amp has to be on. And so one of the kind of rules of thumb is, it, is the hand in the pocket rule, where you always have one hand in your pocket. Never put two hands inside your chassis at the same time. Don't be touching two different things because that voltage can go right through you. And then also, tubes are very hot um, when these are on. So uh, you know, just be careful that you're not, not actually touching a tube because it will, will burn you. So there's our safety stuff. That's what biasing is. Let's go ahead and get started on how to bias your Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. All right, this little blue guy right here is your bias pot, your bias potentiometer. And the first thing you wanna do is go in there and get familiar with the potentiometer. So what I recommend, you need like a, a medium to small screwdriver and it just fits in there and you just twist all the way to the left, all the way to the right, kind of to figure out where your range is going to be and then set it in the middle. And uh, that's gonna be a good starting point for where we're going. We're gonna go ahead and take our millivolt reader. You can set that right there. And take your black, which is gonna be your ground, and this just needs to, to be attached to the chassis somewhere. So I'm gonna just stick it uh, let's see, right there. If you don't have gator clips, run a Radio Shack and buy some. Or you could kind of stick, you know, you might be able to kind of finagle away where it's in there. But uh, again, you don't want to have two hands functioning in here. So I think it's better to just get one 
get a gator clip on, clip on there. And then right here, it's got a little solder point right here that is your, your testing point for this. And it, it literally says bias test point right here. Now go ahead and turn your amp on, both your standby and your on. And we're going to let it warm up a little bit and then we're gonna get our test going here. Once you've got your uh, amp warmed up, you get your gator clip attached with your negative to the chassis, any, any metal part on here, then this guy is gonna hit this test point right here. If I hit this, you can see that's registering an 85. Now, let me just see what it's at at the very lowest. Supposedly it should be about 50. If this is turned all the way down, let's see what that's biasing at. 66, okay, and it should go up to 100. I've never seen it go down to 50, but that's, I think, what the manual says it will do. Um, let's see, all the way up, we're at 110, okay? So these are, already these tubes are a little bit hotter than what you what one might expect. So I've got it here right in the middle, and in the middle, I'm looking at 81, 88, 89, okay, right at about 89, and Here's the deal with, with where you want it to be. Anything lower than about 65 is gonna get really flat. Maybe 60, you know, it's just, uh, Fender says you can go as low as 60, I would not. Um, so you really need to get up into the high 60s at minimum. And, uh, and then I wouldn't go any more than 80 as the highest here. Because if you go too much higher than that, you're, what you're gonna do is it's just gonna get, you're not gonna have enough clean room, you're not gonna have enough head room, you're gonna go dirty really fast, you know, you get to the volume knob at two and you're already getting distorted. I don't want that. I want a little bit higher of a volume knob. So um, what I'm gonna do, let's see what we're at here. I'm gonna, the last time that I did it, I set my bias to uh, 74 and I, I thought that I liked that, but I actually wanna get a little bit more clean room. So I'm gonna readjust this. I'm gonna pull this guy down. I'm gonna try to get to 68. That looks pretty good to me. So right now, this amp is biased to 68 uh, millivolts on the uh, the power tubes. And here's the deal, you know, one of the questions is how often do you need to bias your amp? First off, you need to bias your amp every time you replace the power tubes, okay? Um, you don't need to replace your power tubes every so often, you just need to replace them when they go bad. The other thing is, you need to just check them. Your bias can kind of drift over time. There's no like set rule every day you need to check it or every month or every year, but just ever so often, check it, see how your power tubes are doing, if they're biased correctly. Now, once I've, I've got this bias, what I need to do is plug in my guitar and then listen to how it sounds. Your ears are gonna be what's gonna determine what you like the best, not what mil some millivolt reader says and or what some guy on a forum says, you need to set it to 68 or what I'm saying. Whatever you think is what you want is what you want. So go in there, you know, put it low, you know, maybe start around what I'm gonna do is at 68 and then uh, see what it sounds like. If you go, no, I'm gonna try it a little bit more. Play around with the bias. So anyway, that's how to rebias your Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Hopefully that was helpful to some of you guys out there. And if you like this kind of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.